Hey, I'm Todd. Thanks for choosing to watch my video. And if you would subscribe it, like it, all that stuff, you know, uh, that'd be great. Otherwise, enjoy the video, and I hope it uh, gives you the information you need and is helpful to you. Take care. So I do get a lot of comments with people saying I have saved them a lot of money, and I do get questions, hey, can I send you some money somehow? And now there is a way, if you so choose, called the Fan Funding. You'll find it on the channel page right there. 2008, maybe 2009, I think the build date is 7 of 08, 08. Ford Taurus X SEL. Look at that. So we're probably gonna do rear brakes. We're gonna uh, break the lug nuts loose. 19 or 21 or custom. It could be different. I don't know what your car is gonna have on it. These are aftermarket wheels with special keys. Everything, all the bolts and nuts, if you run into them, are left to loosen, right to tighten. So counterclockwise will loosen it, break them loose, a turn. And then go ahead and jack up your vehicle, get the wheel off the ground, and use safety sta stands, large chunks of wood, something to protect yourself in case your jack fails. And then you'll be ready to uh, take the tire off the rest of the way and get to the caliper and the rotor and the pads. So to remove the caliper, you want to remove the emergency brake cable from its bracket. Here's a spot here you can pull down on it. And then I put a vice grip on it gently. You don't want to be damaging the cable. Just put it on there gently. It should hold. It'll give you slack. And then it'll pretty much just come off. So you have all your slack. Just pull it off there. Getting the rotor off. It has a T40 Torx bit. This is an impact socket set kind of thing where you hit it. And it's going to automatically uh, try and loosen a bolt for you. Works pretty good. You can have someone, before you take the brake caliper and brake pads off, you can maybe have someone step on the brake and you can try and break it loose by hand. Honestly, I don't know what kind of luck you're going to have. I think it's got some Loctite on it. Looking a little bluish on there a little bit. So it could be difficult. You can use a little bit of heat on that maybe then loosen up that Loctite on there if you don't have a impact socket set <clears throat> but that'll allow you to get the rotor off then just tap it a couple times and uh, knock it off knock it off from the back side with a hammer not sure if this needs to be on there because you can actually pull the cable all the way through however if you need to do that that's a way to keep the spring back just take a look there's two little tabs on this right here one there I'm gonna see it this way. Right there. So you have to squeeze those two tabs, maybe with some kind of players or something like that. You can squeeze them down so you can pull them through the bracket on the caliper. There's the caliper there. Because you need to get that uh, cable through that little uh, notch there. So it's about ready to slide back on. Then. <laughs> we can do that. So I just want to show you the two notches on there you need to collapse to get this to come out of the caliper. And when you replace the caliper then you can clean or replace these little uh, dealy boppers here inserts. Just gonna snap into place. And that would be about it for this, I think. Like I said, otherwise you can just clean them up nice and clean. They should be fine like that. Not too bad then to get the pad driver's side, put this through that hole. Can't really do it while I'm on the camera. If I can, look at that. So you get this out and give yourself the slack to do this side here. Should be able to pull this cable through and give yourself the slack to lift this off of this little arm here. Let's see if I can do it. Like that. Pinch those two little tabs and we can pull this through.
and we'll use a screwdriver probably on the bottom side and push the other one and pull it through. It's the best shit I can get right here. I have to put the camera down to do it, but squeeze those two tabs and pull it through, and this uh, cable will go through the hole on the back side, and your cable will be off pretty, not too hard. This is a 16 millimeter right here, so I'm just going to break it loose for now. Just like that. Then we can undo the caliper bolts. Two of them down there. You will find the bolts to be different sizes, possibly. This is probably uh, 13, but the new calipers are not 13, and these are 15 right there. So again, everything is left to loosen right to tighten. Of course, you're looking from the other direction. So we'll take those two caliper bolts off, and then we'll uh, unscrew the caliper from this, and that's really it, and it'll be right off in your hands. I don't know if your caliper's uh, frozen on the rotor or anything like that. You can stick your screwdriver in here. And pry a little bit, maybe give you enough slack to uh, pry this off. Because uh, if it's locked up, of course the pistons need to be turned. You can't just collapse them directly, as you know. Probably from watching maybe one of my other videos on the brake job. But just uh, work this baby off. Like that, and we should go just unscrew this, just turn it, and it'll come off. When I'm putting the new caliper on, I feel it's nice to uh, separate the new caliper because it comes like this as well. You'll see it in the box actually. Let's just look. comes complete I like to take these off so I can easily more easily work on the caliper mounting because that's where the brake pads go so we'll separate this and then we can just uh, screw the caliper part onto there but there it is again left to loosen and we'll screw it on until it feels tight and we'll snug it up a little bit and then we'll do our final tight once it's back on mounted on here so, and we'll work on getting this rotor off. Was that a T40 I believe I mentioned before? I have it. Mine had uh, adhesive paper on the back. Take it off. It's a little tacky, sticky. So, and you might even want to put the caliper the pads in here while it's out. You can certainly do that. Slide it into place. The new rotor on, of course, recommend replacing or machining it. Calipers spun on. <coughs> Excuse me, or of course, again, left to loosen, right to tighten. Pretty easy to spin it on. It's aluminum caliper, I do believe, so you just don't want to cross thread, so I'll be sure it screws in by hand. Got our bolts. There was evidence of some Loctite on there, so I'm putting some Loctite back on. I've done many, many brake jobs without Loctite, and had, as far as I know, haven't had any issues. So as long as you get it tight, 
torque it down. You shouldn't have any problems regardless of Loctite, but putting some on to remount the uh, bracket onto the rear. And then we'll put the caliper on. We're going to slide our caliper on. We do want to make sure that those two uh, notches in the piston are straight up and down as you see them because they're going to actually sit, at least maybe for the inner one, should be affected by the pin. There's a pin here and also on the first inner one because they're identical. And we're just going to slide it on basically and uh, remount our, our bolts here. There is an edge on this. It's supposed to hit the edge on there. It doesn't always necessarily hit. I had to actually hold this with a, a pliers to tighten up these bolts, but uh, otherwise that's it. Slide it on, bolt it in, and we'll uh, put that back on the cable. Toughen this up. Let's go and snap that in there. Weird. Ouch. Pinch. Pretty much like that. Release that cable. Oh, we gotta reattach this, that's what I forgot. So, we'll pull this back down and reattach this cable to there, and uh, that'll be it. We need to bleed our, key, our uh, calipers, and we'll tighten this down too. Probably 10 millimeter bolt here. Open it up, let it try and gravity bleed a little bit. Usually gravity and pressure, all that air pressure stuff will cause the fluid usually to flow out and then we'll have uh, gravity bleed it for a little bit. Here's a master cylinder, you can see. There's a cap, just kind of screws on and off. Click, click. I'm going to top it off. There's the maximum right there. So we've got it topped off. We're going to bleed our brakes. You can have someone sit inside the vehicle and uh, pump the brakes several times. And then when they hold the brake pedal down to the floor all the way, you can open up the bleeder screw. And of course, air and fluid will spray out, which will wash away pretty nicely with just water. So use your garden hose and clean this stuff off when you're done. Yeah, and then uh, let it shoot out and then collapse it. Then they can uh, let up on the brake pedal. And you have maybe pump on it, pump it three or four more times, hold it down, open up the bleeder screw again, let 
it come out and then close it and do that three or four times and you should just see a nice steady stream of fluid once you see a steady stream of fluid out your bleeder screw then it should be good to go and no more air on this side and do the same for the other side now I've got a bottle set up here <clears throat> No, no fluid coming out with the gravity bleed yet. Got a little black hose here. <clears throat> it's on there. Got some fluid in the bottom of the bo bo bottle. Fluid in the bottom of the bottle. It's not really clean, but <clears throat> so we'll pump the brake pedal in the car, and then it'll of course push fluid out through the hose down in the bottle. And when you release the pedal, it'll suck the fluid back up some but we will not be sucking air in so we keep pumping it pumping it and we'll get fluid out eventually and it'll be all fluid and that's kind of a one-man way to do it <clears throat> this way so that's what I'll be doing I'll be pumping it then we'll come back and you'll see the bottle be full full and uh, all I will have done is been pumping the brake pedal trying to push it as far to the floor as you can about 10 pumps got some fluid out pulled the hose off you can see it's kind of running out clear Get some wiggle here oh, little air bubble there Let me sneak a couple out maybe still Well, that should be good. Then we can uh, go ahead and tighten that up and do the same for the other side. Keep an eye on your brake fluid level in your master cylinder when you're doing this so you don't accidentally empty it out. Didn't go down very far for me doing this with just 10 pumps on the brake pedal. And then uh, go ahead and put your wheels on and uh, give the brakes a final pump before you let anyone drive it. And that would complete your brake job on your 2008 and other model years probably Ford Tauruses and other Ford Mercury products good luck to you on your rear brake caliper job rear brake job